song we sang today, Miracles Can Happen Now. Come on, have a seat right now, right where you're at. Here's something that the Lord was just dropping in my spirit as, as, as Levi was praying and things would be broken and healing would happen. And, and, and as Enoch was leading us in worship and the worship team here about miracles happening now, one of the things that the Lord was dropping in my spirit was about, about God just breaking addictions, cutting through habits, cutting through things of the past. One of the things that happens when the Lord begins to cut through things in this past is always something that we have to bring under control, that we have to halt, that we have to, we have to slow down in order to confront it, in order to conquer it, in order to celebrate our victory, in order to champion it. And that's part of what we're going to be talking about even today. Even today, as Levi was praying, the Lord was just stirring in my spirit. As, as, uh, as Pastor Enoch was leading worship in the worship team, God was just stirring up within me uh, something about that song and, and the direction of that song and what that song was proclaiming and just beginning to believe the Lord. And so today may, may very well be the day that something is unleashed, something is broken, something is, they're able to move beyond where you've been in your past. Today may be that day. And so you, you want to make mark of that. You want to make note of that. You want to write yourself a note about the miracle in your life, what, what, what you're confronting, what you're conquering, what you're challenging, and what God's going to allow you to celebrate so that one day you can champion in the lives of others so that the Lord can do for others what God has done for you. Can Somebody say, bless to bless. That's part of what we're talking about, right? There's a sense in which God blesses us, sets us free, pour out your spirit in our lives so that we can walk in freedom and not just be walking freedom, but be these freedom fighters that bring that freedom to others. And, and there's a lot going on today that the Lord was just stirring in my spirit. Uh, last night, as a matter of fact, one of the things I want to mention, if you missed it last night, there was this uh, couples gathering and we were here and the couples were here and we had this, this kind of newlywed challenge contest. How many know my wife and I, unfortunately, we did not win. It wasn't a good day for us yesterday. But I'm waiting for the rematch, so I want to add other events. So thank you, Peter and Nancy and Marcel and Nilsa for putting that on. Uh, come on, give those, give those couples a hand clap. Give a Rachel and Martin Molina a hand clap because they took away the prize yesterday. Today's message, a little bit along the lines of what Enoch, or excuse me, Pastor Enoch and what Levi were talking about. Today's message is, is about establishing grateful habits. It is about establishing grateful habits. And there's a story that I want to share with you. And if you're taking notes, I want you to catch this quote. Because it really impacted me when I heard this story. This story is about a CEO. She was a CEO of Hewlett Packard Corporation. She's, she has a portfolio worth $59 million. She's a, a, she even a, a ran for in politics at one time in her life. And her name is Carly Fiorina. And Carly Fiorina shared a story about something her mom told her when she was eight or nine years old. So my daughter's nine years old right now. Is this is something her mom told her at a very young age. And I see some children in the house. Come on, give a clap and clap for all the kids in the house. Come on now. Familia, that's what's up. We're so glad to see you here together. And so this is something that mama told her daughter. And here's what she said. Her, her mother told her, what you are today is God's gift to you. What you become is your gift to God. Can somebody say amen? amen. So it's, it's interesting because that, that quote just impacted me. What you are today is God's gift to you. That God has given us all something to celebrate, something to be excited about, something to be happy about, something to offer, something to contribute, something to do. There is something unique about being fearfully and wonderfully made. And so there's a sense in which what you are today is God's gift to you. But what you do with what God gave you is your gift to God. You know, when I first heard that quote in preparing for the message, I was impacted by that because I thought of the story of the talents and, 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 and the, serve, the master coming to give the servant talents. And one servant got five talents, one servant got two talents, one servant got one talent. And then the Bible says that, that some, the, the, the servant with five talents multiplied it and made ten. The servant with two talents multiplied it and made four. The servant with one talent didn't do anything. He buried it. He hid it. He didn't, he didn't activate it. He didn't release it. He didn't multiply it. He, he tucked it away. 
Then the Bible says that the master came back to see how everyone was doing. And to the one who had five he, and made ten, he gave even more. To the one who had two and made four, he gave even more. But to the one who didn't, to the one who buried it, who tucked it away, who refused to move forward or do anything what God had given him with. So th that one there, that one suffered while the other ones benefited. That quote reminded me of that story. Because the point is this, God is only going to hold us accountable for what we do have, not for what we don't. God is only going to hold us accountable. Young man, young woman, uh, mama, daddy, uh, tío, tía, auntie, uncles. God is only going to hold us accountable for what we do have, not for what we don't have. And God is desiring that we would unleash, that we would walk in, that we would exercise, that we would apply, and that we would use what God has given us for his honor and glory to multiply, to be blessed, to bless. Isn't that what it's about? What you are is God's gift to you. What you become is your gift to God. So today I want to talk to you today. I want to talk to you about establishing grateful habits. Establishing grateful habits. You know, when you've been forgiven and you've been saved and you've been set free, you've got a whole lot to be grateful for. Come on, somebody, say amen. When the cycles of sin and violence have been broken in your life, you've got a whole lot to be grateful, grateful for. When the, when, the, when the cycle of abuse and, 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 and hurtful thinking and self-destructive behavior has been broken in your life, you've got a whole lot to be grateful for. So today we're going to be talking about establishing grateful attitudes, grateful ha attitudes that come as habits and, and they're going to be very important because establishing these grateful habits are really particular attitudes of gratitude. There's a particular approach, a particular way of being, a particular way that we roll, a particular way that we encounter life, a particular way that we look at challenges. There's a way that we, that we approach these things. And Look at the Bible, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 16 to 18. Look at 1 Thessalonians. Look what it says. It begins with rejoice always. Rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. Notice what the scripture says. There's this posture, there's an approach, there's a way that we engage, there's how we live out our lives, there's, there's because of who God is, what God has done for us, there's a way that we, that we tackle the problem, tackle the challenge, that we, that we address the needs that are before us. And the Bible says there's this was rejoicing, this praying, and this giving thanks in all circumstances. And I want to clarify something for you. I want to clarify the second half of this verse. Because the second half of this verse says, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, I want to clarify something here. The, 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 the section there is not saying, that part of the scripture is not saying that every one of these circumstances is God's will for you. The, the, what it's saying here is, is that this approach of your rejoicing, of your praying, and of your giving thanks, no matter what, is God's will for you. Notice what happens. I want to look at another version of that same scripture, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I want to look at it in the message. In the message, the message says, be cheerful no matter what. Pray all the time and thank God no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you who are called and belong to Christ Jesus to live. So notice the scripture here, this, this, this rejoicing, this praying, this giving thanks and everything, no matter what. Because this is how God has called us to live. This is how God has called us to live. I want to turn your attention right before we get into the, 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 the uh, five, establishing those, those five grateful habits. I want, to, I want you to look at two other verses. One is Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28. Look at that verse with me. Romans 8, 28. And here again, notice what it says. And we know that in all things, everybody say all things. all things. 
Notice what happened. We went from 1 Thessalonians to give thanks in all circumstances and to give thanks in no matter what happens. And now in Romans 8, 28, the Bible says, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. So apparently there is something to be said, not just about our approach, but the fact that God is working through all of it. God is working through it. God is using it for his honor and his glory to bring about some sort of purpose, some sort of plan that the Lord is ultimately in charge and that the Lord is ultimately at work in and through it. Look at this other verse, Romans 8.38. Romans 8.38. Then notice what it says here again. It says, it says in Romans 8.38, it says, for I am convinced, excuse me, uh, I have the wrong verse there. I, I meant the one right before that one. Let me read it to you. It says, no, for in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. No, for in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I think it's the verse right before that in verse 37. And here again, the Bible says that you're more than a conqueror. Can everybody just say more with me? I want, I want to talk about that. Notice this, this giving thanks in all things, in all circumstances, this, this giving thanks no matter what happens. And then this, this other part that, it, that in all things God is at work. And there's a way in which verse, verse, verse 37, 38, uh, pardon the, 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 the piece there. It says, know that in all things we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. And so notice what happens. There is, there is something about God at work in and through everything and our approach about how to tackle it, how to face it, how to confront it. And there's a part that says more than conquerors, more than conquerors. I want you to see this more than conquerors piece with me. Notice where, notice where I started. Notice where I started in the beginning about, about recognizing, uh, uh, being able to control the challenges that come before you and, 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 and confront them and, and uh, uh, conquer them and ultimately celebrate them and at the end of the day champion them. Notice what the Bible says. The Bible says. The Bible says that no matter all things, hey, wait a minute. All things, no matter what thing, anything, and everything that comes at us, the Bible says that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Well, you know what's something that I realized? That in order to be more than a conqueror, you had to win more than one battle. In order to be more than a conqueror, you, ran, you, you won more than one fight. In order to be more than a conqueror, you, you overcame more than just one challenge. In order to be more than a conqueror, you, 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 there's a, something to be said about, about being more than a conqueror. It's, it's more like being a champion. It's like you didn't just win one fight, but you began to live a lifestyle of a champion, a lifestyle of winning, winning a lifestyle in a way in which you kept overcoming not just one, but the other one and the next one. And and that one, and ultimately we will overcome this one too. How many can say amen? So the Bible says that we would be more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who loved us. More than conquerors. Now in the time that I have left, here's the point. Habits. Habits are the bridge between who you are now and who you are becoming. Habits. Habits are the bridge between who you are today and who you'll become tomorrow. And so we look at the scripture and the scripture talks about the approach and the scripture talks about the circumstances and the scripture talks about all these things and anything and everything and no matter what the thing may be, God is at work through all these things. And then the scripture says that you and I, despite all these things, will be more than conquerors. And we have to ask ourselves sometimes, how do we get from here where we're at right now to over here to where God wants us to be? How do we get from here when the struggle, with the fight, with the faith? with the mistests, miscalculations. How do we get from here in the struggles? And sometimes when we're struggling, maybe it's, a, maybe it's a battle, maybe it's a struggle, maybe it's an illness, maybe it's a diagnosis, maybe it's a particular job loss. And, and, and how do we get from here to over there? Habits are the bridge between where you are to where you want to be tomorrow. You know, I went to a doctor visit uh, back in May, I think. Oh, back in August, back in August, my second one. 
I went to a doctor visit, and the doctor says, you have high cholesterol. And I said, what? Are you kidding me? All I eat is uh, lengua, menudo, tamales, tacos, uh, uh, dorados, you know. All, all, all I eat is all the good stuff, refried beans, because they taste better the second time around, right? How is it that I have high cholesterol? That's impossible, right? And you know what's funny is that the, that the doctor gave me a tip and the doctor began to tell me, hey, there's a couple of things that if you do these things, that if you start doing this one thing, as in eat meat once a week and not every, other, not every day, right? Four or, five, four or five times a week. That if you do this one thing, you're going to get from here where you are right now with that high cholesterol all the way over here to where you want to be. How many know what I'm talking about? So then all of a sudden I started slowing up and now I, I eat that meat once a week and then dessert once a week. And then all of a sudden I begin to develop this habit not just about how I eat but then also about how I live. And I started a a adding power walking to my, to my weekly routine. Come on somebody, I'm not the only one. And all of a sudden what happens, habits are the bridge of where you are right now to where you want to be tomorrow. The Bible says you are more than a conqueror. So how do I get there? Habits are the bridge. Habits are the bridge. You know, when I was uh, looking at this, I, was, uh, I looked up a, a statistic here, uh, the boxer Canelo Alvarez, right? Canelo Alvarez, uh, he's a, he's a three-title boxing champion, so he owes a title in three different categories. And Canelo Alvarez, it's interesting, he's a champion not because he won one fight. Not because he won one time, but because he actually has 53 wins, one loss, and two draws. And, and there's a sense in which when you're a champion, you begin to live a lifestyle of a champion. You don't just win one time. You begin to develop a winning attitude, a winning approach, a winning way of life. And when it becomes part of who you are and it becomes part of where you're headed, in a sense, you become more than a conqueror. That's what God is talking about for us in terms of living our lives. And winning in him. Reminds me of David. David, King David, before he was a king. king. Before King David was a king, he was just a little boy. He's actually 16 years old. Can you believe that? King David was 16 years old. No claim to fame. Uh, nothing su you know, uh, uh, super outstanding about him. Just kind of average, natural. He had, a heart, he had a heart for sheep and he had a heart for God. He had a heart for, 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 for taking care of the sheep and obeying his father. He had a heart for submitting as a son. He had a heart for being obedient and following through. He had a heart for worshiping and writing poetry and psalms and, and songs. And He had a heart for dance. He had a heart for for, for the Lord. And so here is David. Here God takes this young man from right here who's just a shepherd. Not a whole lot about anything. Not a whole lot about nothing. He takes him from where, 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 where he was to where God wanted him to be. And it's interesting because in doing what he was supposed to do and fulfilling his role and responsibilities and his duties and in being faithful and doing it with excellence, God takes him from here to over there. But it's these kind of habits that begin to develop. Notice what happens when, a, when the Bible Bible says that, that David, he, he doesn't just d d win one battle, but he wins multiple battles. The first battle he won, the Bible says he, he defeated a bear. And then after the bear, he defeated a lion. Then after the lion, he went looking for his Goliath. And after his Goliath, he went to leading armies. And after leading armies and, and, and these groups of rebels all uniting to fight in the same cause, in the same, in the same category. After he does that, he's ultimately crowned and anointed as king. Getting from here to the habits are the bridge. Habits are the bridge. From where you are to where you want to be. Here we go. First Thessalonians 5 reminds us that we are to thank God no matter what happens because this is the way that you are to live. You know, when you're moving and you're becoming more than a conqueror, there are particular habits of gratitude that we develop. And they really have attitudes of gratitude that we develop. You know, every now and then, uh, as I race through these five right here, every now and then, uh, you know, when you, when you begin to, to, to wane or doubt or, you know, uh, and, and you need somebody to cast it out, just call a prayer warrior, right? 
Just call somebody that has more faith than you do and have them pray over you in Jesus' name. But notice what these habits do. Number one, number one, regularly practice giving thanks. Number one, let's look at the habits, so the, the, the five grateful habits. Number one is regularly to practice giving thanks. Regularly practice giving thanks. When you regularly practice giving thanks, you're, you're, you're practicing, you're, you're practicing thanking God and thanking others. You know why? Because you're acknowledging that you see them. You're acknowledging that you see God's at work. You're acknowledging that you see others serving. You see others giving. You acknowledge sometimes that God is working in and through them. So when you practice this, ha this, this habit of, of giving thanks, you're, you're, you're seeing God at work in and through you. Sometimes you, you, you begin to see God working and you get more hours and more projects and more opportunities and more assignments. And you, and you, and you need to give thanks unto the Lord and give thanks unto others that are serving you and serving with you. Number two, express gratitude. Regardless of the situation, express gratitude regardless of the situation because gratitude is an attitude, right? It's an attitude of faith. And, and, and this attitude of faith knows that God is in control. This attitude of faith knows that God is in control. You know, when I was talking about the uh, every now and then, uh, if, if when you're in need of prayer, call a prayer warrior. Uh, I know many of you, uh, one, of the, one of the things that I do, and I'm, I'm so grateful to have a praying parent and a praying mom. I'm so grateful to come from a, from a prayer warrior that prays and intercedes and stands in the gap and pushes through and calls things out. And if ever I'm in doubt, I just make a phone call and then my mom starts texting and gets busy. I didn't even know she knew how to text, boy. Come on, somebody. She moved into the next gen. She's texting and, and FaceTiming and boom, she's like on beast mode prayer warrior. Look at what happens. I express gratitude regardless of the situation. You know, yesterday we were here uh, at the couple's gathering, and it was a beautiful time. And I heard a powerful testimony of Nilsa Wadas, and she shared about the, her experience overcoming breast cancer and, and how Jesus was present and Jesus was with her. And then she shared that testimony of how grateful she was and, and her husband, Marcelo, being by her side and, and just this wonderful opportunity of them journeying through that and that today she is 10 years cancer-free. Come on, somebody, give a hand clap to the Lord. Expressing gratitude regardless of the situation, number three. Number three, and, and don't stop giving thanks and praise God, especially when all is well. Praise God, especially when all is well. You know, sometimes we forget how bad it can get. You know, sometimes when things are going good, that they're going so good that, that we forget how bad it can get. Sometimes when, when, when we're rolling in the dough and opportunities and possibilities and, and things to go, th places to go, things to do and people to see, sometimes we can forget and we can have suffered from some particular kind of memory loss that possibly that attitude of gratitude doesn't shine forth, it doesn't come through. It, it, it's something that, that we lose sight of. Don't stop giving God thanks, especially when things go well in your life can somebody say amen? amen especially when things go well in your life don't forget number four learn to see how bad experiences can produce good outcomes learn to see how bad experiences can produce good outcomes you know uh, uh one of the things is is that the lord is at work just like romans 8 28 28 and 8 38 we're talking about the lord is at work for us for our benefit the lord is at work for us for our benefit and for our good but that does not mean that we're not going to suffer that doesn't mean that we're not going to have to work through some things that doesn't mean that we're not going to have to work it out that doesn't mean that we're not going to have to push through it. It, it it means that the lord is at work in some way somehow god is going to flip what the enemy meant to destroy us he's going to turn it around for good for his honor and his glory and sometimes i like to say the greater good god turns it around for the greater good and you know what in our lives pers and personally and even in my life many of you know that i didn't grow up with the father and so and and I, yet i had to work through it i had to suffer through it i had to work it out i had to get to the other side the other place where i was able to reconcile with my biological father where the lord brought somebody in my life essentially to help refather me and help me find my way and you know what i say today i said man i said god's definitely done something and it has served for the greater good and the greater good has three names, Josiah, Isabella, and Tabitha. Come on, somebody, say amen. 
The greater good has to do with my children. The greater good has to do with, I may not be the best father, but I'm definitely not the worst one. And I'm always working on being even better. Can somebody say amen? But not just to our biological children. How about the fathering of our spiritual sons and daughters? How about the fathering in ministry? How about the fathering and discipling? How about the fathering of re realizing and recognizing that we've got to pour our lives out into the Royal Rangers, into the girls' ministry, into the children's ministry, into the young adults' ministry. we got to pour our lives out into the lives of others to see God be honored and glorified and raise up sons and daughters for the kingdom of God. Can somebody say amen? Number five, number five is make gratitude a part of your interactions with others. Make gratitude a part of your interactions with others. And here, here's, here's what I have to say about this. You know, when you're interacting with others, when you're, when you're practicing these, these uh, 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 grateful habits and this attitude of gratitude and you're full of faith and you're encouraging others and you're blessed to bless, when you're practicing that, it's contagious. Not only is it contagious, you know, sometimes we don't realize it's not always easy, easy to see the brighter side of things. Sometimes you need somebody to help you see the brighter side of things because you just can't see it yet. That's what the attitude of gratitude, that's what practicing the, the habits, the grateful habits does for us. Can I just ask everybody to stand up? We're going to do something here really quick. Yesterday we did something. We did something with the with the couples. We had them. We had them pray and give thanks to the Lord for their significant others. Uh, I want. I want to do something. I want to invite you. What we're going to do? We're going to thank God. We're gonna. We're gonna give God thanks for thirty seconds. Is that all right? We're gonna give God thanks for thirty seconds. And we're just going to allow for this attitude of gra gratitude. We're going to allow for this grateful habit to well up in us and just begin to thank the Lord. Regardless of what's going on, regardless if you're on a high, you're on a low, you're in somewhere in the middle, or you just lost all together. Just begin to give God thanks. And let's just do that together right now. Let's just thank the Lord. Come on, just out loud, just right where you're at. Just begin to thank him for, for all that God has done, all God has done in your life, for who he is and what he has done. Just begin to be thankful to the Lord right now. Just call it out right now. Lord, we give you thanks. We give you praise today, God. We honor you. We glorify you for your healing, for your provision. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for freedom. God, we thank you for our families. We thank you for our loved ones. We thank you, Father, for our places of employment, God. We thank you for our vocations, God. We thank you for our job, God. Lord, we thank you for, for the worship, for the prayer. We thank you for our church, God. We thank you for our pastors. We thank you for this ministry, Lord. We thank you for this facility. We thank you for our brothers and sisters online. We thank you for safety and health and wholeness. We thank you for happiness, God. We thank you for healing and deliverance, God. We thank you for reconciliation, God. We thank you for promises of the hope and the dreams and the plans that you have, Lord. We thank you for our, from, the, from the smallest to the oldest. We honor you. We bless you. And we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. You know, when you walked in, you got a little piece of paper. And if you didn't, you can grab it on your way out. You got a little piece of paper. And it's about gratitude goals. Gratitude goals. What are some things you need to work on? Where are some areas where you got to step it up? What's something that you need to do differently? To get from here where you may be to over there where you want to be. Gratitude goals. Gratitude goals. Pastor Dan's going to share in a minute. He's going to talk about the Bless the Bless offering. And I just want to thank him publicly because, Pastor Dan, we're, we're, this Bless the Bless offering is really about the future. It's really about the future. And if the camera can catch this heart right here, can you catch that heart? Can you catch that? Are you able to see it? Light it up. There you go. You know, Jasmine and crew put this together, creative team put this together. 
I wanted this to be on camera today. Because I wanted you to see the people in that heart. I want you to see how God's calling us to disciple the city. And that means turning our hearts back to him, one another, and the city. How this offering, blessed to bless, is about the future. It's not about the past. It's about where God wants to take us and what God wants to do. And we're asking you, out of a grateful heart, to join us in doing so. Amen? Thank you, Pastor Dan. Pastor Tom.